I know why you're here. You want to be able to see all the passwords on their website, isn't it? I know that. And yes, we are going to do just that as crazy as it sounds. Now, before we get started, kids, remember, hacking is illegal. If you get caught hacking, do not tell them that you know who is Mr. Hacker Lawyer, okay? Remember, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you don't get hacked. Sorry, I mean, so that you can be kept abreast of the latest article hacking tutorials that we're doing for you. All right, so this will be what we'll be hacking today. Sorry, I mean, this will be what we'll be learning today. So you have a best friend, Mr. Hacker Lawyer, on the left, right here. And what Mr. Hacker Lawyer will be doing is to target a server. So from the server right here, what we are looking out for is different types of displays that allow us to look at, say, user information, like a user profile or a user profile page, or it could be about products. So whatever the case is, we are trying to find what we call as injection points. So this will be the places where we're looking for so that we can inject our SQL statement over so that we're able to retrieve and display those data. So in this case, what the hacker could do is to target the server and after which they use statements like union to help us query into other tables within the database so that we're able to retrieve other information, like say, for example, the password field, right, or any other information like the address and all these different personally identifiable information, and then be able to display them back as they are being processed and then after which retreat from the database going back to the web page so we're able to view and dump out all this critical information. So right here with Colony is running and we are on a browser and we're targeting a site. So right in front of us, we're mutilated too. So this is going to be a vulnerable website for us to target. So what we can do now is we can go on the web services under REST, SQL injection, and click on our user account management. And this is a really popular way for different types of systems and services to interact by exposing different web services. So in this case, for example, we have the get method. And from the get method, it states the following, get a particular user. So what can happen here is that if I click on the link you can see the changes made under the URI and from here you can see the following so there's a result accounts username signature information so this display certain information from us and we know that back end there could be a database running and we are trying to pull out our information from it so what I've done here is I've already started Burp Suite to be our interceptor and I hit back over to the browser I go to the top right corner I clicked on this foxy proxy I click on Burp Suite so now we're beginning to intercept a request and if I go ahead and enter again and we can see right here we have the interception and from the interception, what I can do is do a right click, send over to repeater. So what we are doing here is we're trying to change up the different way that we're requesting into a target server to see whether it is susceptible to different types of attack methods and whether we're able to ultimately retrieve information from other tables. So from here, I can go ahead and send the request and we get back the same information. So in this case, we have resolve, accounts, username, and so on and so forth. So all these are the standard things that are happening. And what I can do now is I can test out different type of input. Say, for example, I can put a single code, click send on that and you can see right here we're getting exception line 229 file we have the error number 1064 you have an error in a sql syntax check the manual that corresponds to my sql server so we're getting a lot of information we're getting the syntax to use near so you can see right here and we have the query so query select username my signature so that's two columns from accounts where username equal to adrian all right so this gives us insight into the sql query that's being used as part of querying the database to return and display information on the web application server end so what we can do here is you can see the following we have sql statements we're in the blue tree schools and we have the select so we're selecting the columns within the tables of a database, right? So you can see here we're selecting the column customer name, address from customers, and I click Run SQL. And from here, we have the number of records. So we have 91 records, and we can see different information. So this helps us develop the SQL query that we want to use to hijack into the target system. And what we can do next is to think about, okay, there is a where, all right, so in this case, we have a customer name equal. So say, for example, in this case, we have the first customer, all right? So this is what we're inputting into the target system, okay? And once we have that, what we can do next is to be able to say union select. So this is the part where we are trying to pull out information, possibly from other tables. So if you see on the right side, we have like customers, categories, employees and so on so all this could be the other possible target tables and the columns within them and then what we can enter say from union select is that we can go ahead and enter say things like all right perhaps i want to look for a birth date perhaps i'll look for notes from employees so we are targeting a separate table so once i go ahead and click run sql on this you can see the following all right we have now replaced the data 
in the column for custom meaning address, or we're able to pull out information from the other table and populate them into the following column. So here we have the following. So in this case, we have the birth date and the notes, all right, from employees, so which is a different table. So in this case, what we are doing here is we are targeting other possible fields or columns, say for example, like password field, all right, it could be possibly on the other information like username from a separate table. So we're trying to retrieve those sensitive data out of the tables within the database. So say for example, what I can do here is I have the single quote and what I can do now is to enter say union and then followed by select followed by say username, all right, so which is a critical column and then followed by say comma password which is another critical column and then followed by from and in this case possibly one of those table names could be accounts or right? it could be users so all these are different type of common table names that are regularly used that we can try to go after so once you're ready go ahead in three two one click send and we can see right here we have the following information all right so we have the username we have the signature all right that's the first information we got and then subsequently we have username admin, the my signature in this case is going to be the password. So if admin pass, so we managed to get the password of all these different users within the table. And if you look at the end, we have the following interesting information. Here we have hacker loy and with the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I jump back over into the side, I can enter the username hacker loy. All right, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we click login. So we manage to hack into Mr. Hacker Loy. If you see right here on the top right corner, locked in user Hacker Loy. So one problem you encounter is that we are retrieving two columns at one time and that may not be sufficient number of columns if you're trying to pull out the whole of the table. So what can we do then? So we can use something like concatenate. All right, so in this case, we can say select concat. And what we doing here, if you click run on it, is that we are matching or we are being able to push in multiple strings together, right? So in that case, this becomes one single column. So we're able to retrieve multiple columns and then be able to display them out into a single column when it comes to being able to retrieve all this different information. So say for example, what I can do here is I can change this and add this with a concatenate. So I enter concat and then followed by say for example, password and then is, all right? So once I have that over here, I can do a comma and then we have the password field. And then with this, I go ahead and click send. All right, so once I click send on this, you can see the following here, right? My signature, password is. All right, so this helps us add in additional information or even possibly pulling out more information from multiple columns and then displaying them out into the limited, say, two columns that we're able to display. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And remember to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications to the channel so you are kept abreast of the latest ethical hacking tutorials. Thank you so much once again for watching.